Welcome back to Talk to Sen Khan. We all as Pakistanis are very clear on how we perceive the human rights violations committed by the state of India in Indian occupied Kashmir. But what is the US thinking? What is China thinking? What is Russia thinking? And what are other uh, influential world powers thinking and perceiving uh, these events? Uh, today, the topic of our show is Turkey's stance on the human rights violations in Indian occupied Kashmir. Today, the guest of our show is Marvi Shabnam Uruj, a senior Turkish journalist who's also written multiple times on this subject. Welcome to our show, Marvi Shabnam Uruj. This is Zain Khan. It's a pleasure to have you on Tactical Talk. Hello, Zain. It's nice to talk to you again. It's been long. Marvi, let's get to the first question. As a journalist, how do you perceive the state of affairs in Indian occupied Kashmir? Uh, as a journalist, I followed the I followed what's happened this summer uh, uh, in in Indian occupied Kashmir. Uh, I think in the late uh, September, tensions between Pakistan and India uh, over uh, Kashmir region escalated once more. Despite it looks like things are a bit calmer now, we all know that. Uh, it's not over. It will not be over. Uh, I think the Indian forces arrested more than 800 civilians across disputed territory, according to reports. And it looks like they carried out their most severe crackdown uh, in more than two decades against civilians in Kashmir. And uh, what's more... Uh, Problematic is that the latest developments have brought uh, Indo-Pakistani relations to their lowest point amid ongoing unrest in Kashmir. And uh, it looks like the conditions, the humanitarian conditions uh, in Kashmir uh, have sharply deteriorated. For example, I read the really sad story of Nasser Shafi an 11-year-old boy whose pallet-riddled body was found uh, after he disappeared in Harwan in uh, September during protests. Uh, this story, his story, was, was really sad, it was really, uh, was this really terrifying, terrible, and as a person who can't do anything but only write, I have felt desperate. I I have to write. I wrote, but I still feel the same. I mean, the feeling have not passed yet. I know he is not the only one uh, as a victim of Indian brutality. Uh, there are dozens of more whose fate is similar uh, to this boy. Uh, India's relentless drive to quash the will of Kashmiri people has recently resulted in the death of over 150 Kashmiris, I think, and injuries to a staggering 15,000 others. And it looks like India does not think about uh, stopping violence and ending its brutality in Kashmir. Unfortunately, it's disappointing to see that India is not the only one closing its doors on any solution. But we see that the United Nations seems to be doing the same. The silence of the United Nations and the ineffectiveness of the United Nations Security Council about the situation in Kashmir is just further evidence of uh, the problematic structure of the organization. You know, it has failed to fulfill its claims uh, to protect global peace many times. Uh, Kashmir is a 70-year-long conflict. Actually, it's one of the world's longest ongoing conflicts. And it's been 68, 69 years since the Kashmir dispute was first brought to debate in the UN. But the solution has yet to be reached, and the humanitarian crisis is still there, increasing every day. Uh, actually, 
uh, I tried to visit Indian control Kashmir this year to see what's happening with my own eyes because uh, as journalists this is the thing we do all the time we go to conflict zones we talk to people I mean regular people and see and try to understand what's really going on what's what's really happening happening in these but all the roads to Kashmir were blocked it was almost impossible to enter uh, the region and it was almost impossible to hear the real story see the real situation there Indian security forces haven't let me or the other journalists go inside they say it's really dangerous but seriously who made this place dangerous and how we will say it with our own eyes uh marvi what is turkey's official stance on the human rights violations in indian occupied kashmir uh, well zayn as you know turkey is a clo close ally of pakistan and Turkish government fully supports Pakistan's position on uh, Jumma in Kashmir and Turkish people feel the same way but it's not about, it's not only because the, the two countries are close allies Turkey sees the situation as a humanitarian tragedy as a shelter to more than three, people, three million refugees fled from war-torn countries like Syria and Iraq. Turkey sees humanitarian issues as a priority. Nothing is important than human lives, we believe. Turkey wants the United Nations to be more active to prevent serious human rights violations perpetrated by India against the innocent Kashmiris. However, uh, as I said, the UN has proved its bureaucratic inefficiency, wasted time, and corrupted structure. And the reluctance of members to achieve UN goals many times. You know, it has failed to prevent the Cambodian genocide, the Srebrenica massacre, the Somalian civil war, etc. And the UN peacekeepers have also been accused of many crimes like sexual abuse, rape and child harassment during various missions in Africa. And the situation in Kashmir is just another evidence of that. The UN is junk and it's full of ineffectiveness, injustice and unfairness. Uh, if I turn back to Turkey's stance on Kashmir, I must say that all the officials and all the politicians, including the governing AK party and the opposition parties, they reiterate their grave concern over the prevailing situation in India held Kashmir and affirms their solidarity with, with Kashmiri people. They say that they are committed to the cause of the Kashmiri people, but you know, it's, uh, it takes more than Turkey's uh, nice words, nice feelings and nice efforts. And I think uh, the world has to do more than that. Today, the UN's own, own reports describe today's global situation as the greatest humanitarian crisis of our lifetime. Uh, the world is facing the highest level of human suffering since World War II. More than 125 million people around the globe are in need of humanitarian help and protection. But the global system is totally breaking down. That's why Turkish President Recep Tayyip Erdogan tirelessly says that there is a need to revise the current system. I mean, uh, the, 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 the world is uh, really sensitive when it comes to Western countries. But when it comes to Kashmir, when it comes to Syria, when it comes to Iraq or Afghanistan or any other place where usually uh, mostly the Muslims are desperate and need protection and help, uh, the world is silent. So uh, we, we, we need uh, to revise the UN and we need to talk about the world order in order to bring peace 
like places Kashmir, I believe. Uh, would you tell our viewers a little bit about where Turkey has raised their concerns on the Indian occupied Kashmir situation? Turkey has raised our concerns on Kashmir situation in almost all international platforms, from the UN summits to international humanitarian gatherings, even the organizations with regards to security and economical issues between countries. Uh, Turkey tries to raise an awareness uh, regarding Kashmir situation. Uh, most recently, Turkey voiced support for Pakistan's demand to send an orga, uh, orga, uh, send a team uh, to probe human rights violations in the organi organization of Islamic Cooperation or OIC, as we know. Uh, Turkey asked the Secretary General of the OIC to mobilize a contact group and send an observer mission. But uh, as I said before, it needs more than Turkey's efforts. Uh, for example, Muslim countries should raise their voices more and should ask for a solution together, all together. If we act together, the solution can be reachable. However, we are very, very far from that point as uh, much as I observe. Uh, you know, India believe that uh, it scored an unexpected and significant diplomatic win at the 43rd session of the OIC Council of Foreign Ministers at Tashkent this summer. Because uh, the final declaration of the session unbelievably, unbelievably did not make any mention of Kashmir. You know, the OIC was established uh, in 1969 and all 57 members has always said that they back Pakistan on the issue. The group has always maintained that Kashmir is not an internal problem of India and Pakistan, but it's an international issue. And this found mention in the last four uh, declarations, except the, the very last one, as far as I know. Moreover, uh, you know, the OIC contact group on Jammu and Kashmir held a special meeting after Turkey's request at New York last year. And, you know, a strong support was extended by Turkey and Azerbaijan as well. Uh, they called for cessation of violence in Kashmir. But the Council of the Foreign Ministers of the OIC omitted to mention Kashmir, which was really important. This is unfortunately a very, very disappointing thing for the organization, and it's a shame for each Muslim country as well. We fight together, we fight with together, we are angry with each other, and we uh, live alone each other again and again each year and it's become I mean the distance between Muslim countries uh, increase every year if we can't stand together if we don't understand that we have to come together unfortunately we will be all alone today it's Kashmir tomorrow it's someplace else in the Muslim world but uh, I have to sadly say that someday the Muslim leaders will understand that it will be too uh, too late. But uh, yeah, it will be too late, sadly. Thank you so much, Marvi Sabnam Aruj, for being on Tactical Talk. It was a pleasure having you. It was a nice pleasure for me as well, Zayn. I hope we will talk again soon in the future. This is Marvi Shabnam Aruj, a senior Turkish journalist discussing Turkey's stance on the human rights violations in Indian-occupied Kashmir. Until the next episode of Tactical Talk, this is Ayan Khan. Take care and goodbye.